Good evening. At Hyde Park tonight, uh, we feature a prominent human rights activist, a social worker, and uh, a very famous and strong female political uh, personality from the Maldives. Of course, when we talk about the Maldives, we talk about a current political um, situation, a turmoil in the archipelago, but also uh, a wonderful and amazing tourist destination. A warm welcome to um, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Maldives, uh, Dunya Mamoun. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank Good you for evening. The um, your father and mother have uh, a lot of links to Sri Lanka, but of course your father is in prison. We'll talk a little about that. Must be a very difficult time for you, the family, and his supporters. Uh, they have had very close links to Sri Lanka too. Your mother studied here and your father has been visiting here quite often and you uh, have been visiting here very much too. Thank you once again. It's a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to talk to you. As you mentioned, it's been a very difficult time uh, personally for myself and for my family. My father is, uh, has spent over five months in prison. It's coming up to six months um, very soon. Um, I just want to also uh, note that uh, really our family appreciates the close links we have with Sri Lanka, as you have mentioned. My mother studied here when she was very young. Uh, my father did spend some time during his childhood and he was also later posted as ambassador from Maldives to uh, Sri Lanka. Okay. So uh, some of my earliest memories uh, was in Sri Lanka. I spent a few months but here. But you did not study um, here. I, I did go to a school. My sister was here with me and my brother, and we were about six, seven years of age. So we spent a few months then. And as foreign minister, I valued very much the strong ties uh, with Sri Lanka, and I visited frequently. And um, it's, it's good to see this relationship between the Maldivian people and the Sri Lankan people. Right. Um, the, as I mentioned at the beginning, your father, the former president of the Maldives, uh, um, he is in prison now like you said, five months, but he's imprisoned for 19 months for obstruction of justice. And, uh, and there's also a possibility that he may face uh, between 17 to 20 years of uh, jail conviction if uh, the, the, the government and the Supreme Court there decide so. But um, as a daughter, your brother is also in prison with your father. And um, you have another brother who is with uh, the government. How does it feel for you? Because they are in opposite camps while your father is still in prison. Yes, as I mentioned to you, I think it's very difficult to see uh, my elderly father, uh, a man who served his country uh, for over 30 years and who actually built our country to um, the level of development that we see, modern Maldives, as you know it, really was the work of the Maldivian people, but under the guidance of my father. So I think um, he achieved a lot for the country to see such a person being taken away uh, to prison was heartbreaking. I was with him at that time. Obviously, my mother, my sister, my whole family is, is very much impacted by this. And, and as you already mentioned, my brother, uh, he spent uh, over a year in prison already, um, many months without charge as well. Um, I believe uh, my father, my brother, and uh, also my sister, and uh, my mother with them um, were working really for the values that they believed in and for a cause that they believed in very much. Um, my other brother that you have mentioned is in government. Um, we all supported President Yamin, as you would well know, and I served also as his foreign minister. I believe it is um, the choice that individuals have made um, given their understanding of the political situation and it's, it's, it's a freedom that is very much part of democracy which though in a small community such as ours really still becomes difficult because you see families being divided because of the politics and it's not just my family. Many families I think face this issue. We are now with the modern democracy and political parties in place. We have siblings, we have a husband and wife supporting different political um, agendas and I think that is something that we have to learn to live with uh, whilst respecting the decisions that individuals are making. I myself uh, for one um, have served under President Yamin for some time um, as his foreign minister and also in a capacity at the health ministry and I think the whole family worked together to bring this government in. Unfortunately things didn't work out and the delivery of what we expected for our people really did not happen or things went wrong at some point. 
Well, uh, you have uh, shown a lot of strength as a human rights activist and uh, some of the very few uh, women political figures in the Maldives. But what interference have you shown so far? Uh, because obviously, there's your, it's, it's your family, your father's half-brother and uh, your brothers. And they, there's so much of family involvement mm. uh, as, as much as there's a lot of uh, international uh, involvement in your country too. Um, as you mentioned, I think I was one who, uh, when I saw things worsening um, between the brothers and I saw um, though there were very real issues that we needed to deal with, that um, this rift uh, was also based on, on uh, maybe family links and maybe the lack of proper communication or communication breaking down um, between um, uh, the brothers, if you will. I was one who called for a dialogue, for communication, for discussion, for trying to resolve issues um, without going to this level of political animosity, if you will. But unfortunately, um, the corrective steps were not taken in time. Um, my father Hi. believes that he tried very much to communicate, that to um, say, let's sit down, that things are going in, in a wrong direction, let's work it out, let's um, try and take steps. Uh, so that we deliver to the people in terms of their expectations, in terms of our young democracy, in terms of uh, transparency. There were allegations of huge corruption, so many issues that as a country that we are dealing with. But um, I, I don't want to blame any particular side because I think um, steps were maybe not taken uh, enough on both sides and including the, the more moderates who were there in the middle. So. Anyway, we are where we are. My father remains in prison. Um, he's at his age and given his health, uh, the family has appealed a number of times for him to be transferred to his home because um, he has uh, certain medical conditions which requires him to have family members around him. And his doctors have said that. And I am still hoping that the government the uh, would consider that. The opposition has also reached out to uh, your international partners to call for the release of your father your brother and other political opponents. Uh, how far is this international involvement and uh, connection working out for you? Um, as you have mentioned, I think internationally um, there is a lot of concern. People are watching closely what's happening in our country. Um, there are, as I mentioned, very real issues with our democracy. There are um, issues where people lack the confidence in our judiciary. Um, is it conducting fair trials or not? Um, there are issues, as I mentioned, of corruption. Though we see development, we see big, big projects being completed, we see a lot of infrastructure being built. And to give President Yamin credit, I think he has um, achieved certain things in terms of the economy. Tourism is good. Um, investors are coming in. On the other side, there's a lot of concerns uh, about our heavy debt. Uh, would we be able to repay it back, uh, the risks that we are taking. And I think one of the main problems is that um, in terms of his decisions, he's maybe not very inclusive in taking people along um, uh, with the decisions that he's been taking. You might know our parliament has not been functioning for some time. There are issues to do with um, uh, 12 MPs where who have supposedly lost their seats and there's different decisions coming out. Uh, also from the courts on it. So I think uh, I have always said this political crisis can only be overcome through a political solution and dialogue. Unfortunately, what we're seeing is so many people in jail facing um, courts, facing trials, facing sentences. And um, I am not saying that crimes should not be punished. Um, I do firmly believe in that. But I believe in our current situation where there's eight or nine political prisoners, as you will. I think um, for those, especially given we have an election around the corner, we need to work out um, solutions by working together because we have to prepare for a credible election and we have to also keep our country united. It's very divided at the moment. And um, uh, your country uh, in this region, any, any issue and any problem within your uh, country would actually affect regional security. Uh, what, what concern do you have here uh, as a former foreign, min foreign affairs minister? I remember being in the Maldives somewhere in March when the state of emergency was um, uh, re-extended by a further um, period. But by this time, the, the uh, issues that the Maldivian government raised was that uh, 
the, the law and order should be maintained and it's important that uh, there is proper dialogue. So I think I hear the same, uh, same uh, sentiment from both sides. But uh, talking to you right now, I understand that you look at things in a more neutral manner. Uh, I, I presume that's also because your brothers are on both camps. Uh, how do you see this uh, regional uh, security, threat to regional security and stability? Yes, I think uh, a stable Maldives is very important, uh, especially for our neighbors, Sri Lanka, India, and uh, we hold a very strategic position within the Indian Ocean. During my father's time, the foreign policy was very much balanced in that um, he wanted to make sure, and he made sure with the foreign ministers who served at that time as well, that we held our relationship particularly with India and China and other countries in a more balanced manner so that we interacted with them, we uh, got their support for our development, but we were, you know, respected each other as equal partners. Currently, we have seen the pendulum shift very much. You might well know that our relationship with India has been very strained in, in recent times, whilst our relationship with China, for example, has been strengthened. And I do see, um, you know, there is some positive in that, that we do get financing for some of the bigger development projects, as in Sri Lanka, I think. But I think we are becoming also overly dependent and aligned uh, perhaps with China, which is not healthy for Maldives in the longer term. And I think this is an issue of concern to the rest of the world as well. So I would strongly advocate for having a more balanced foreign policy. It's important for us to stand on our own two feet. We want to see our development for our people, but I think we need to keep those relationships very balanced rather than tilting. Uh, too much in a particular direction. Right, I'm very much interested uh, in talking about India and China, especially because uh, China's influence and India's uh, close links with Sri Lanka as a, a neighbor has been under political scrutiny, and of course the Maldives too. Uh, we'll talk all about that after this short commercial break. Do stay with us at Hyde Park. Welcome back. At Hyde Park, we are talking with the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Maldives, uh, uh, Dunya Gayum, who is the daughter of uh, former Maldivian President Abdul Gayum, um, who is imprisoned currently. And I think uh, before we talk about India-China, although I mentioned that we'll discuss uh, further on that, I'd like to uh, skip to the Maldivian elections around the corner in September. Um, of course, uh, the Maldivian um, Elections Commission accepted the nomination of Ibrahim Mohamed Soli, or Ibu, as the joint opposition presidential candidate. We, too, in Sri Lanka have seen two um, joint, uh, op joint uh, presidential candidates being mm -hmm. presented in the uh, former uh, presidential elections. But this seems to be uh, followed in the Maldives, too. What is your view uh, going forward? In this nomination. Um, I want to say that um, I actually want to congratulate uh, the presidential candidate, Mr. Ibrahim Soli, as well as his running mate, Mr. Faisal. I think they are a strong team, and I think they uh, bring hope to Maldivians in terms of addressing some of the very difficult issues that we are facing together. My main hope also is to see uh, Mr. Soli as a unifying candidate who will bring together the people of Maldives who are very much divided at the moment. I think what you mentioned about coalitions, uh, the last two governments in Maldives also came in as coalitions, and it's most likely that coalitions succeed in the elections these days because there are four very strong um, leaders of political parties backing uh, Mr. Soli, my father uh, himself, as well as the um, Jumhuri Party, uh, obviously the Maldivian Dem Democratic Party or President Nasheed's party, and then we have Adalat Party. So there is a, a united um, backing for Mr. Soli, and I believe that uh, because he stands very much for justice and fairness, and he is himself seen as a person who is honest with integrity, I believe that he would be able to serve the people of Maldives in overcoming uh, the crisis and actually tackling the very real issues that we have. I think President Yamin um, has delivered on some, but I think he has failed in unifying people and in also um, overcoming some of the crisis that we have seen. I think he needs to show definitely more humanity. For example, in the case of my father, despite the appeals, despite his age and health, we have not seen 
um, any kind of, um, I would say, forgiveness or concession on his part. Um, so I think um, Maldivian people uh, very much value uh, a free environment that where their rights are respected, that they do not have to live in fear, and they are able to go about their business um, in, in a safe and democratic country where uh, freedoms and rights are fully respected. Uh, talking about the election again, I think former President Mohammed Nasheed, uh, speaking to Hyde Park uh, earlier on himself, said uh, he would he would in fact contest the election, but that was later reversed. But uh, during the discussion, he laid out certain measures and um, certain areas that the uh, incoming uh, Maldivian government will have to work on in order to put the country right, mm -hmm. at least the uh, image internationally. But uh, how do you see uh, these areas? What areas do you think should be immediately addressed going forward for a new government? I think, um, firstly, let me uh, note Mr. Nasheed's decision, though he wanted to contest in the election, um, given that he is um, convicted and serving a sentence as such, I think the decision to withdraw has given the opportunity for the united candidate to come out, and that united candidate is Mr. Ibrahim Soli. Um, I agree with Nasheed that there are many areas that we do need to focus, and immediately, I would say, is the reconciliation process between this very polarized um, kind of political camps that exist at present. And moving on from there, I think a lot of real work that needs to be done because parliament is not functioning, legislations are not coming in, and I think our institutions definitely need strengthening um, in order for them to uh, properly be independent and able to function uh, well. Um, the judiciary is something that people have noted for some time now, including the international community and also within the country. I think the confidence in the judiciary that they deliver justice really needs to be strengthened and that's one of the key areas I believe that we do have to do a lot of work on. So uh, um, in terms of the economy, I think, um, again, the very real issues of, of um, all that borrowing that we are doing, managing these projects. and. For our development, because we're an island country that is um, spread out across many islands, uh, we need to really focus on. I think currently there's different opinions. Do we, you know, kind of develop a central area or particular areas? Whereas we're actually spending quite a lot in developing services on very remote islands as well. So um, a more kind of um, consolidated or organized plan in terms of de delivering development in a cost effective manner. Um, is important, I believe, and, and again, tackling the real issues of corruption because there's a lot of allegations um, of money uh, going here and there, and I think that has to become a lot more transparent in, in how uh, state funds are being used, uh, how effectively we are using them. And uh, foreign policy, I think I mentioned earlier, I think coming back to that balanced uh, uh, policy where we don't ignore we have, I think, ignored like, um, you know, the EU, the UK, the US, um, you know, concerns that they have raised about what's going on in Maldives and our democracy. And I think to keep those friends is important. Um, we should respect uh, their viewpoints and um, the genuine efforts that are made to ensure uh, a better Maldives uh, right. for the future. Right. And um, if we also talk a little about uh, the, the President Yamin, he, in fact, uh, on Sunday night challenged his opponent uh, in the upcoming uh, election to answer to alleged crimes of the ousted Maldivian Democratic Party government. And um, if we also look back at your father's rule, any government, any ruler or any party will will go back to revisit their rule and want to, um, th there will be lessons learned mm -hmm. and things that they would want to do differently. But what do you think are the areas that should have been uh, done differently, that, that your father's rule could have been somewhat taken a different turn? Um, going back to my father's rule, I think it was a very different era in the Maldives. Um, he um, did introduce modern democracy to Maldives. We didn't even have political parties before. We didn't have a system of um, separation of powers, if you will. So when he came in, Maldives actually emerged from a monarchy or a kingdom, if you will. So uh, how it was governed was very different, let's say, 30, 40 years back. So in the latter years, um, due to various pressures as well, but largely his own initiative to introduce democracy, he was able to 
bring in that change whereby he brought in different political parties and uh, a lot of changes. He set up a human rights commission. He brought in a new constitution separating powers. And it was with the these changes that Nasheed came in um, with his political party and won that election. And I think my father showed an example to history by stepping back. And it was a very smooth handle of power, if, if you will. Um, since Nasheed came in, and I know he has also a lot of support from particularly amongst the youth, and uh, I think he had support of the international community as well. Uh, unfortunately, I think he was also not able to move beyond this party political divides to unify the people and um, he failed to gain the support of the judiciary and he didn't have parliament with him and then my father was in the opposition and and things progressed from there that led to his resignation and then a new interim government came in so I, I, I believe um, what you have said that we need to draw from history and the lessons learned so we don't make the mistakes that we made earlier but I think it's equally important to also not go into what I call a cycle of vengeance, whereby each government coming in is looking back and then coming after certain people, trials take place, you know. I, I think we have to start looking ahead. And that is important because we have currently seen a number of governments where this cycle of vengeance has been happening. As you know, uh, former President Nasheed was himself imprisoned and he was sentenced to a long sentence on terrorism. And again, we see a process where many are facing terrorism trials, including my father and my brother, and um, uh, my brother-in-law also remains in prison. So I think uh, we have to go beyond that, and I think we have to um, try and unify the people and then actually concentrate on moving ahead with the process of delivering to our people uh, in terms of uh, the need access to jobs. Um, we have a very young population. We have huge social issues like drugs problems. We have um, our f women are facing issues. We have violence. We need more women in employment and also in politics. So the very real issues, environment is a real issue that Maldives faces. So I think there's a lot of work to be done, but a lot of time is going or has gone in terms of trying to you know, attack each other and fight between the parties. and uh, uh, You were talking well. about international concern, but I think uh, a week ago, Modi's investor service said uh, that they changed the outlook of the uh, Maldivian government uh, for, to negative from stable and um, also the EU two weeks ago, in fact. Uh, they took up a framework for targeted sanctions and uh, to take action against the Maldives if the situation does not improve in the country. Now, I think this is the time for the Maldivian people to rise, mm -hmm. be it President Yamin or the former president. As you mentioned, I think um, Moody's had given very positive ratings about Maldives earlier. But for many of these, the political stability of the country is very important. So they would be assessing that um, on a continuous basis. And you had mentioned the change that, that had, they had brought. Um, specifically on the EU sanctions, I think EU um, Earlier, when we were in the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth itself, the UK and various countries have been um, very clearly and strongly um, noting the fact that Maldives democracy was going in the wrong direction, that things um, were going from bad to worse. When I was foreign minister, I defended the country a lot and the government, and I said, um, give us time. Uh, we are a very young democracy. We will correct these things that are going wrong and set Maldives back onto the right path. But unfortunately, this did not happen. Um, so currently, a uh, message I gave regarding the EU sanctions, for example, is as a Maldivian citizen, uh, no citizen wants to see uh, external sanctions or actions taken against their own country, which might in future affect um, you know, the normal people of the country, the economy, the tourism. Uh, I believe the EU have looked and reviewed very much at how sanctions are and how they work because when we look around the world, often sanctions have not been effective in achieving what they have set out to achieve unless it's backed up with some other kinds of actions as well. So they have specifically come out with these targeted sanctions where they talk about um, either freezing assets or travel bans of people who are seen to be linked to the regime and involved in human rights violations, if you will. So I feel that this is still an opportunity for the government and particularly for the country to 
correct the things that are going wrong. So if, that, if yeah. I may, uh, I think the EU also called on the Maldivian government and the opposition to engage in what they call genuine dialogue, which paves the way for credible, transparent and inclusive presidential elections. Of course, with the, the September 22nd elections um, around the corner, w what promise do you have for transparent elections? And um, uh, also, do you see genuine uh, effort by both parties? by the current government and the opposition to actually en engage in what they call genuine dialogue and, if I may add, constructive uh, uh, resolution to the Maldivian issue. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, I have been one who has advocated very strongly um, for sitting down together and for having a genuine dialogue. And I know that the rest of the world, the international community, including the UN and also the EU, have consistently been calling for that. Um, sadly, we have not seen that. And it's um, the, the excuses, if you will, given is the opposition, uh, the lack of trust in, in the government's commitment towards the genuine dialogue. And on the government side, um, they would often say, well, the other side is giving us preconditions. For example, they would say, release these prisoners, otherwise we're not going to sit down. So whatever the reason was, I think um, we have really missed that opportunity to sit down. And I think that uh, does impact on how we go ahead because there's certain things that can only be done by working together. For example, in preparing for a credible election. Um, I know time is very short and um, there's a lot of mistrust still around how free and fair would it be? How would the vote go? And even now the opposition would say, well, it's not a level playing field because many of the possible candidates, if you will, are behind bars or serving sentences, so they're not even able to stand. But if we even put that aside, we have to then look at um, how fair is the atmosphere for proper campaigning? Do they have um, you know, access to the media? Do, does the media have the freedom to really report? Uh, or are they also um, facing difficulties in terms of um, actual reporting on, on certain issues and, and being frank about what's going on? So there's still a lot of challenges ahead. But as I mentioned, I think it's, it's uh, an achievement that the joint opposition have managed to come out with one candidate who is currently traveling and campaigning in the country. So we can see that that is happening. So I do hope that we do not see any further um, difficulties arising and that we can move as smoothly as we can into the election. We in Sri Lanka have a very good experience with common candidates. Well, we take a short break at Hyde Park. We'll be back with more on the other side with Dunya Mamun. Welcome back. At Hyde Park, we've been talking about uh, the political scenario in the Maldives and uh, the, the upcoming presidential election and uh, the fact that a common candidate has been brought forth just as in Sri Lanka during the last and the preceding uh, presidential elections. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, as we talk about common candidates, President Maitripala Sirisena, as he won the presidential election, I, I, I guess you were the uh, first foreign dignitary to uh, personally congratulate him. And uh, does this mean that you have been continuing to uh, focus on foreign affairs, uh, matters of interest to foreign affairs, uh, even after you were out of office? No, um, the election happened while I was the okay, foreign okay. minister in Maldives. So I, I was um, very happy to visit Sri Lanka and to be able to personally call on uh, President uh, Sir Sena and to congratulate him on behalf of the Maldives mm -hmm. government at that time. Obviously, we had close ties um, with the Sri Lankan government and the people, whichever government was in place. And uh, President Rajapaksa himself was also a close friend of Maldives and including my father mm -hmm. uh, as well. So it's, it's good to see, though, that, um, you know, that the hopes of Sri Lankan people in terms of uh, achieving their goals and to kind of feel a, a sense of um, hope in the air uh, at the time when the change happened as well. And, and I hope that things continue to go smoothly in, in Sri Lanka. For, for uh, how do you review uh, relations between Sri Lanka and Maldives at present? I think um, we have very strong ties, though I do believe that the Sri Lankan government is concerned about what's happening in Maldives. I believe that they are concerned about my father. They have uh, close links uh, with him while he was in office and, and, and afterwards as well. Um, we have very close people-to-people um, -people relationships. As you know, a lot of Maldivians living uh, in Colombo and also outside. Uh, there will be a number of Maldivians voting here in the election. 
and we have a number of Sri Lankans working in, in Maldives in various fields. In fact, growing up, I remember most of my teachers were Sri Lankan in, in the school in, in Maldives as well. And I think um, it's, it's good to see this um, strong ties of, of friendship and trade and travel uh, between our countries. So I do hope that uh, the strong relationship continues uh, into the future. Something uh, uh, common to both Maldives and uh, Sri Lanka is uh, China and India. Uh, the, the matter that we discussed earlier on in the discussion and something that I promised we'll discuss at length. But China's influence in uh, funding development and uh, India's close ties with uh, the neighbors. I think these issues have been taken up, picked in the media uh, constantly. Uh, what, is, what is it for the Maldives? I remember speaking to President, uh, former President Nasheed, who said if he comes back mm -hmm. to uh, power, he will review these um, projects mm -hmm. and uh, decide on the future of them. But what is your view? I think uh, Maldives, we still continue to have a, a, a professed India first policy, which means that um, we really looked up to India for guidance in, in international affairs and uh, the positions we took on international issues. Also, India was very much involved uh, and supported the development of, of Maldives in the past. But as I mentioned, we see a shift in that and we see the shift towards China, which obviously China makes has also been funding uh, very much. a lot of infrastructure yes. development, especially yes. with their Belt and Road Initiative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's a lot of concern, a lot of research also done around the world how China is using um, their financing, their loans in, to kind of spread their influence and not necessarily always in a very healthy way. So I think that is something that we do need to review as a country because um, in the short term, we might be able to achieve a lot of things by the support that they're giving. But I think we have to look at, are we compromising our sovereignty as a people? Because that independence and sovereignty is very important, uh, especially for Maldivians, but for people everywhere. And I remember in Sri Lanka as well, the new government had made promises about reviewing projects and the relationship. But ultimately, I think when you have those ties and you are in debt to another country at that level, it is not that easy to kind of get out of uh, some of these projects and that relationship that has now um, come into being. So I think whichever government comes in, um, it's important to review our foreign policy um, and especially the opposition, as you mentioned, uh, former President Nasheed has already noted um, the need to review also these bigger projects. I think we have to build our links back to India, our links back to um, the Western world, for example, the EU, the UK, the US, who, many of whom are estranged from Maldives now because we um, have moved away from them, we're not listening to them, and we are not really treating them as friends. Is, is uh, it necessary present. to listen to them in the sense the Western world especially, uh, world especially? I think it is important because um, we have links with them in terms of tourism. Okay, some of the arguments is we don't need the tourists from Europe. We have a lot of tourists coming from China, but I believe that Maldives always valued and had strong and good ties with almost all countries. So I see no reason why we have to um, kind of cut off those ties. And I think they are talking about real issues. And there are, although people talk about, you know, double standards of the West or double standards, I think there are genuine issues. And there is reason why we should listen to them. And I think we can um, treat them as our friends and rebuild our relationships with them. That doesn't mean we are dictated to by them necessarily, but I think in terms of the genuine will to bring a better uh, future for our people and for the country, I think there's work that we have to do. And I think we need all our friends um, to be with us in, in that. Certainly, process. and I think uh, we've discussed at length about the Maldives. Let's talk a little about you, your work. Uh, you worked uh, with the UN for some time before getting into politics, yes. I presume. Yes. Let's talk about your work. Okay. I, um, I studied in the field of social anthropology and uh, my master's was uh, looking at uh, gender issues or what I call gender activism in Muslim societies. So as you know, there's a very traditional view or interpretation of how Islam treats women. And I wanted to look at the work that has been done by women, um, reclaiming their rights, reclaiming the equality from within the religion and also look at um, how uh, work that was done in Egypt and countries like Iran where 
women themselves were reinterpreting the text and um, saying, you know, Islam actually calls for gender equality and there are many rights that unfortunately have been ignored or because of culture have not been properly addressed. So after studying um, in the UK, I returned back to Maldives and I joined the UN mm -hmm. to work in the UN Population Fund. A lot of my work was on population and development, um, right. also health research, women's health issues and um, a lot on gender and the empowerment of women. So uh, I was able to uh, work on with my colleagues on various studies. Uh, we looked at gender-based violence, for example, also mm -hmm. reproductive health. Uh, one, some of the first studies on HIV and AIDS in the country, mm -hmm. on drug use amongst youth, um, I was able to contribute to those. So I had a very rewarding time working at the UN myself. After that, around two, 2007, when I got the opportunity, I wanted to serve in my father's government. At that time, he was facing a lot of pressure also from um, internationally because of uh, the issues that were happening in the country, the fact that we were not up to standard in terms of a modern democracy, the, the changes that needed to happen. So I wanted to support him uh, during that time. So I worked in the foreign ministry as the deputy minister for um, just over one and a half years, and then the government changed uh, in 2008, and President Nasheed's government came in. Then I worked in the opposition, again, with my father, but mostly in the women's wing and working with women, um, trying to bring them out more into the council and also into the parliamentary elections. But things changed very quickly, so then again, we saw Nasheed resign. We saw, then I went back into government, again, back to the foreign ministry as state minister. I worked for President Dr. Wahid for some time, and then we had the election in 2013 where President Yamin won, and then I came uh, as the foreign minister at that time. And, and I had, again, a very uh, rewarding learning experience as foreign minister. I was proud to serve uh, my country in that capacity. It was a difficult time because we had a lot of criticism, as I mentioned, because of the very real issues, but I believe I did my best in defending the country, but at the same time, I tried to lobby to make sure that things were moving in the right direction internally. So um, I had access to the president, the cabinet, and colleagues, and I tried to advocate for that. Um, I am saddened to see that things did not improve and that we are where we are at present in our country, where we um, have one of the most difficult situations in our history, I would say. So it's, it's not easy, but then you learn through um, difficulties and challenges, and I think um, I want to acknowledge here also the work of um, particularly my sister. Um, I have a twin sister. Uh, she worked closely with my father um, in this reform movement or the changes that he wanted to bring um, after his split from President Yamin. So uh, she has herself sacrificed a lot and stood by her principles and worked uh, as a very strong woman for, for her cause. As a human rights activist, I, I, activist, I think um, you have shown greater scope too and uh, given your father's situation, uh, do, you, do you want to uh, continue in this sphere or do you want to get back into politics? I uh, think, um, first of all, I would like to see um, stability in our country and also to see the situation of my father and my family um, improve, obviously, that personally it's, it's a difficult situation at present. Um, I have a strong passion for gender equality, women's rights issues, and I was involved in um, drafting the first ever um, anti-domestic violence legislation, which uh, went to parliament and worked very much cross-party so that we got a lot of support from all the parties when that legislation was passed in, during uh, President Nasheed's time. It is still my hope and wish to see more women coming out in politics. I think women can play a role in building peace, in ensuring better dialogue, and I think we don't see enough women at present uh, in our country. What women. framework do you have propose, uh, especially in the region we talk about uh, empowering women, especially in rural areas of unprivileged society? But uh, in the Maldives, since you work, uh, you're very much in the center of these issues. Uh, how do you propose a framework going forward mm -hmm. uh, to engage more women in politics or to empower them and also uh, for them to stand up for their rights? Um, when our new constitution was discussed, actually, there was um, many women and others who did lobby for a quota, for example, in parliament in terms of women, but unfortunately, the quota didn't go through into our new constitution. And I think um, recently I was at an event by an NGO called Women in Democracy. They have actually um, trained a large number of women, again, across the political spectrum 
to encourage them to stand for the coming parliamentary election. So I think um, I have pushed again and called for, and I think that's something that we would like to see in our political parties, perhaps quotas, saying that we will field a certain number of women as candidates and then give them that support because I believe um, women are still hesitant to come out and we need to study really why are the, what are the reasons, what is the block that is preventing them and then work to address those challenges I think in order to bring the women out and I think still societal, cultural attitudes, practical reasons um, such as you know care for the family and children and lack of support from maybe from their husbands or from within their families still many many reasons that stop women um, from being active and coming out and I think with the proper support and, and the guidance and the encouragement I think we will see more and more women come out and that they can contribute in a positive way to, to the politics in our country as well. I wish you all the very best Dunya in your future endeavors and your families and um, of course to uh, the, the Maldives as a whole for a better uh, and prosperous nation. We'll see you again um, next week at the same time at Hyde Park. Until then, take care. Have a pleasant evening. Good